Look at these little guys. <laughs> Bits. <laughs> Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com. Today we're taking a look at uh, War Games Atlantic's latest releases. I say latest; it's a loose term. There's more on the way. There's more on ships going to ports as we speak. As a matter of fact, uh, and I'll show you some of that in a minute. Some of it you may recognize in uh, some old uh, some oldies book goodies. But today we're going to take a look at their newest newest releases that are actually probably on store shelves as we speak and uh, kind of dig into what's quickly becoming some of the best value on tabletop miniatures out there. So here's their website, it's War Games Atlantic, and you can uh, you can kind of get lost on this site, there's so much content. The uh, main site itself has kind of like the newest uh, articles and news here at the top, which is super good because you know, there's a lot of stuff you can read. Like, as a matter of fact, I think this was just a few days ago that the Eisenkern, which is uh, something from a few years back, they, uh, you might remember them from the, uh, what was it? The, the I-Core universe, I think, it was, the Iron Core universe, yeah. And uh, these are great minis, and I can't wait to get these on uh, the tabletop here. And also, it uh, looks like some Grandier, uh the heavy support troops are coming in finally. But they have a whole lot of like previews. Once a week, they put out a newsletter, so definitely sign up for the newsletter if you like this sort of stuff. But look at all these offerings here. Like There is so much they got going on in such a, a short amount of time from... Uh, the Deathfield series, which is more like the sci-fi stuff, kind of like 40K and things that you might be more into here on this channel. But they also have like classic fantasy, uh, a lot of historical stuff, and they even you know have stuff from starting with World War One and you know getting into the Second World War uh, as well. And then of course at the bottom all the new releases. But maybe more importantly, and, and I haven't. Uh, talked about this and i just noticed it the other day is they actually have a store finder on here so not only can you buy from their website which they distribute in different you know countries like whether you're in the states whether you're in uh, england or europe etc etc down under uh they got you covered it just might take a little bit longer to get in the stock you know but that's that's normal with the warp travel and stuff but you can see distributors if you're a retailer like where to scoop them up from and actually carry them and then of course they have a whole what you can't see the whole thing here but this is over on the left here is just a listing of game stores that actually carry their stuff so you can plug it in and kind of find out where you could you know bebop into and actually pick up these box sets if you know that's allowed right now in your particular area now getting into uh today's uh, video I'm going over the releases here. I uh, they sent us a big box full of their newest stuff, which was the Iron Here Yar, which is if memory serves, is just basically the spirits of the fallen warriors that actually make it to Valhall and to o Odin's Hall and uh, and just kind of you know fight all day and eat all night. I mean that sounds pretty good, right? But in actuality. For this game, for the Deathfield series, which is really neat, and they did this with all of them, and there's basically a, uh, the, the, the story is, there's these sports teams where it's actually a sport. War is the sport. And they pick up all these fighters from different eras in, in Earth, and then they bring them into the kind of this galactic uh, sort of arena type deal, and, and they just basically battle it out. To heal them up and they just keep doing it over and over again every season or whatever and they haven't you know they don't have a game for it yet but they're talking about you know once they get enough kits you can see here that they might be doing that so we've got uh these guys here now these make great squats how about that <laughs> If you're into squats, uh, these are probably some of the cooler ones I've seen. Uh, probably the only plastic ones that I have ever seen outside of GW, to be quite honest. Um, a lot of people have resin ones that look really good, but these are probably the first multi-part plastic offerings that I can remember now. I might be speaking out my butt, but I think this is it right here. And of course, they always have deals. Like if you wanna buy more boxes, they have. Uh, they used to have a free shipping option. I'm not sure if that's still going on, but I believe it was $100, I might be wrong. But definitely look for that somewhere on one of these banners here. But th they're $34.95 for 24 figures that are multi-part, uh, come with a ton of accessories, which I'm about to show you. I mean, it's basically a buck 50 a figure with very little drawbacks. The only drawback is you gotta provide your own bases. But I mean, I just dug in the drawer and found some bases here in a second. So we're gonna take a look at those and one more thing. And the next box they sent us was uh, Giant Spiders, actually. Now, <laughs> I wasn't sure what to make of that uh, here on this channel because I know some folks are like, I don't really care about spiders. But the cool thing about these guys is, is they're basically the same price. 
um, with and you can you know get the bundle deals here as well. You get 12 big spiders, 12 small arm spiders. Um, so it's basically the same price, $1.50 a figure, even though the small spiders are kind of smaller. Uh, you need your own bases, no big deal. Most people have those, and I'm gonna show you the different sizes they fit on here in a second as well. But the one thing um, that I did wanna mention is they come with like techno bits. So like, if you wanted to make something a little different, like they're not quite like Tyranids, but you could do them for like, you know, some sci-fi encounters for like RPGs. Obviously this stuff would work great in any sort of RPG kind of element. Um, I guess you could put them in like orcs and uh, goblin type armies or gits and, and things like that. But it, it's just kind of a cool thing that they put out new release wise that I, th that I think is a little, it would resonate with, you know, the viewership here, but I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time on it, but they're pretty neat little miniatures nonetheless. And, you know, finding a, a plastic spider is a little hard to do if you want something of a quality that's to this level. So I think any way you look at it, it's a, it's a good find and there's good value in this for sure. So let's get them on the tabletop here. Let's take a closer look at them and, uh, and see how they compare to some miniatures out there that you're probably a little bit more familiar with. So first up's gonna be the giant spiders. And this is a, actually a pretty chunky box. You might remember this is about the same squad size as some of the old Warhammer Fantasy uh, unit boxes from back in the day now these are oops looks like two of the legs fell off these are going to be all identical sprues for the most part i believe um and it's going to be about six of them so there's 24 models in here so you kind of can do the math on how many come on each sprue but uh taking a closer look at them you can see there's plenty plenty of options so you got the big uh what are these hexapods i forget this is like the sternum or something. I don't know. I'm trying to reach back in my mind to my high school dissection days and I can't quite remember it. But uh, so you got their, their torso or thorax. I don't even know what this stuff's called. So these are the bigger spiders. These little ones are already pretty much together for the most part. And then they have these extra bits right here that like there's a little ray gun sort of thing and uh, looks like a hobbit kind of. Uh, all webbed up there and another sort of uh, sci-fi gun you got some sci-fi like bionic leg sort of things right here and then there's like a sci-fi eye goggles so you can kind of make them traditional sort of fantasy or rpg style or you can go ahead and make them a little bit more on the sci-fi side of things just to have some funsies uh with right there and i mean you're not going to blow a bunch of money on it because well they're 35 bucks for 24 so you can have some fun and really unlock some of that uh hobby potential there and they go together um they are a bit fiddly like uh but you just gotta like kind of hang in there they have some little slots for the for the legs um and but it can get a little fiddly i mean putting six legs on anything's always you almost need an extra hand almost but just kind of hang in there it's it's not that super difficult um when it comes to that but you'll notice too that some of the legs are gonna have those flat parts there so you can put them on a base. Now this is a 40 mil base, so that, so this particular pose isn't quite uh, gonna cut it. So you might wanna do like a 50 mil base for that guy right there, and he's pretty cool looking. But then the small, the other style of bug, which you can also assemble with like, you know, some more of the uh, sci-fi kind of style stuff with the guns and, oh, did I, did we not put together? One of the ro oh, there's the robo legs. Okay, I was like, wait a minute. Uh, so you got the robo legs, the kind of mech legs right there, and then this guy actually fits, and he has those little uh, flat studs right there. Will actually fit on a 40 mil base. So, you know, it's kind of standard. I mean, he wouldn't look bad on a 50 mil either, to be quite honest. Yeah, no, that doesn't look bad at all. So just depending on what you're doing, and you know, if you don't want to spring, if you don't have extra bases laying around, and you don't want to spring um, for extra bases, you could use coins. I mean, that gets expensive, but if you have them laying around, or you could get those MDF cut little uh, round perfectly, not the bevels or anything like that. And the st stuff will look the same, just regardless of what you're trying to do. But just kind of keep that in mind. And then the smaller spiders, these guys are cool. You could put a couple on a base and they're pretty well detailed. Like, I mean, they, they look kind of creepy and there's plenty of detail there to definitely paint on. And then you've got these two styles here. So maybe you want to put them on a single base. Maybe you want to make a little, like a little swarm base. You could, you could do all that. And then the little, uh, you can even have them like kind of hanging out munching on a dude or something like that. Like there's the human dude and there's the little hobbit kind of guy. 
And they can pair up pretty good to, you know, if you, you want to talk about, like, sci-fi minis. Well, there's a Death Corpsman. That would be a fun little fight. He, he needs a he needs a shovel or two. And, our, like, a Primaris Marine. Hey, there's a, there's a classic matchup right there, right? <laughs> pretty neat. And then these definitely match up pretty good too so lots of potential there i think i think it's a neat little kid is definitely worth talking about but let's uh let's jump into the not squats back to where we started so this is the newest death fields unit the end here are i'm probably not saying that right i think i am <laughs> forgive me uh i think it was that norwegian i don't know uh, this, I love this story back here. Like, they're basically, like, abducted from their longship. And then their their sports team owner, because that's basically what it is, puts them on a high-gravity planet. And, of course, you know, then their growth is stunted. And they get, they get all, they get, they get all tiny. They get all wee. And their the offspring's all wee and everything like that. And then they battle against each other. And they get healed up. It's a, it's a cool little concept. I can't wait to see what kind of game um, they actually develop from that kind of storyline right there. But these, I mean, straight up, these make great counts as alternative miniatures they're like super compatible with games workshop um you know warhammer 40k stuff obviously the other stuff would work great with sigmar or um you know warhammer fantasy i guess uh, all that's coming back here in the near future so 24 miniatures on eight different sprues right here tons of options uh probably not going to put all of them together but just to give you an idea of how they size up, uh, we'll put an, enough of them together. Now they do come with like an ax and a shield, but that's mostly for like the squad leader because you're only gonna end up getting six out of the box right there. But that's a pretty pretty dope looking ax right there. You could definitely have some fun with that bit. Um, and it's armored too. I didn't notice that until just now. That's that's a pretty neat looking, uh, looking tomahawk, almost tomahawk sort of ax. And there's two different ones. Um, then you've got on the weapon side of things, you know, you've got basically a plasma, a flame, or standard kind of carbine gun sort of things right here. Grenade launcher. Uh, what else? You got some, got some comms. Got the old standard comms. Uh, oh, you got the holstered axe too. I like that. And look at all these heads right here, and of course a plume too. So plenty of different ways to uh, equip your soldiers or your duders here. And I love this classic uh, kind of throwback helmet. To, uh, to almost to the old space squats. Definitely inspired by the space squats right there. I love this. So these are pretty neat. Uh, these kind of remind me of uh, Halo guns a little bit. I think maybe that's what they're going for. But either way, it all comes kind of full circle. And I do appreciate that these models, uh, the torsos are already kind of glued on. So while you won't have as much variance on like pose, uh, when you actually put the guns and things on and all these different heads right here, I think they'll look different enough that if you have a couple squads of these on the table or a couple boxes worth on the tabletop, it won't be too, um, you know, duplicated. It'll look natural, I'm pretty sure. Let's, uh, let's get some of these together. So I ended up putting uh, these on different size bases. This one is, ooh, what is this one? I think this is 32, yeah, this is, Hold on, that's 20, yeah, it's 32. Okay, <laughs> so it's, it all starts to look the same after a while. So this is a 32 mil base, and you can see this has got great detail. I mean, check this out, $1.50 a figure. I mean, look at all that detail on there, and all the posability, you know, the arms uh, cut off right there. This really isn't posability, or posable, but uh, this all works, and the head turns and everything like that, so it's very, very cool, and I like the, I like the armored helmet there, and it's sort of uh, melted type look, and then here's a, uh, squad leader sergeant type dude he's obviously a, a bit a bit more uh, you know outgoing and uh, get, getting stuff done right there and you can see there's not that much flat I mean there's basically no uh, mold lines there's just kind of where you clip them off the sprue uh, very very cool stuff so again 32 millimeter base they don't look bad on a 32 at all and then if you really want to put them on a 25 although I'm not sure 100% uh, why you would they'll fit on that too and then here's a uh, Here's this uh, sergeant kind of looking fellow with his, uh, uh, man, I don't even know what that cap's called, but we'll call it a sergeant cap. I'm sure it's something different, but I don't know what it is. And uh, he looks cool too with the, basically it looks like a shoddy, <laughs> a halo shoddy. I love it. Uh, they did such a good job with these. And how do they compare? We didn't do all the weapons, but you kind of get the idea there. Uh, how do they compare to uh, their their larger friends, <laughs> the Forge World Death Corps Kreisman? Well, uh, I think they fit in just fine. And of course they're not. Gonna... Oh, that's adorable. 
<laughs> I love it. So yeah, I mean, there is a little bit of a size difference. So if you do want to play with these, you know, in, in games like Warhammer 40k or something, you, you kind of have to make some respectable rules like, hey, let's just assume this guy is twice as tall or something like that. Just so, you know, you, you don't create any feel bads. He's on the tabletop. But other than that, I mean, these guys, these models are dope. So if you want something that's a little bit different uh, on the tabletop to make your guys kind of stand out and um, have a really cool uh, kind of theme as far as uh, this goes right here, the uh, the new knot squats would definitely uh, fit that bill, I think, as long as you're into some uh, some imperial style armies. Although you could go the extra mile and make these a little chaosy if you really wanted to, but I feel like that's just that's just a lot of work. But some people rise to that occasion. So. That is pretty much it for this one. We showed you two great kits. I think one is definitely probably more relevant on this channel than the other, but thank you for bearing with me through it. They they wanted me to show it off, and I was like, you know what? It's uh, I think I think it's definitely worth talking about there. So make sure to check them out over at War Games Atlantic. They got tons and tons of kits over there, and lots more coming here in uh, the early months of 2021 as well. It's just War Games Atlantic. Uh, dot com. So thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos.